One of the primary objectives in calculus is to figure out how to determine the slope of a curved line. Now we've heard the word slope before when we studied algebra, but I'm guessing you only did it in the context of a straight line. So if you look at this picture here, um, I'm calling it old algebra, where you have y equals mx plus b, which you're probably familiar with. Then we learned how to find the slope of those lines by finding two points and then doing uh, some sort of formula where we compute the rise compared to the run. And so you get a formula like y2 minus y1, which gives you the vertical change, over x2 minus x1, which gives you the horizontal change. And the ratio of the rise to the run is called the slope, usually designated by the letter m. Now m, if you'll notice, was always a constant. It never changed. The slope was 2 or the slope was negative one-third or something like that. And the reason it never changed is because it was a line. You see, whatever the tilt of the line is here, it'll be the same here and here and here forever. But on the other hand, if you have a curve, the slope will change depending on where you are along that curve. You know, sometimes it might be uh, positive. Sometimes it might have a slope of zero, sometimes negative slope, and it is constantly changing. So when we try to do uh, this and, and answer this question as to what's the slope of a curve, we get what's called a derivative. It's a calculus expression. And a derivative determines the slope of a curve at a particular x value. So you can't just say what's the slope because it's constantly changing. You have to say what the slope is um, at a given x value because it's constantly changing. So here's, here's what we're going to try to do here. If we have a curved line and we want the slope at a particular x value, um, we're gonna, here's what we're going to do. We're going to add in an extra x value a little bit to the right or to the left of x. Now if this is 5, I want this one to be like 5.1, not very far away. Um, so symbolically we're going to write x plus delta x. So x is the meat of the number and the delta x is just a small, small change, not very far away uh, at all from x. It will be 0 0.1, 0 0.01, something like that. All right, now if we find the slope between these two given points, uh, let's see if we can write that as a, a formula. If this is x, that will make this y value f of x. And if this is x plus delta x, that will make this y value f of x plus delta x. And so if you do rise over run, you get something like this. f of x plus delta x, that's your y2, your second y value, minus f of x, that's your first y value, divided by x plus delta x uh, minus x, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, now if I clean that up a little bit, we have f of x plus delta x minus f of x all over just delta x because the x and the minus x cancel. Now, if I said that's exactly the slope of the yellow line, that'd be incorrect because, as you can tell, and I've kind of exaggerated the difference here, but they're, they're not exactly the same. One's tilted slightly higher than the yellow line that uh, I want the exact slope for. So think about this for a second. How could I make the slope of this dotted orange line more accurate or more like the slope of this tangent line? Well, the answer is if I move this dot farther to the left, staying on the curve, then the uh, slope of the dotted line will become more like the slope of the yellow line. And so what I'm doing in effect is letting x plus delta x move back closer to x and you'll get a more accurate slope. Now how do I say that mathematically? Well to make x plus delta x slide to the left closer to x, in effect all I'm doing is getting rid of the delta x. So this is very important. I'm going to take the limit as delta x goes to 0. Now why can't I just simply say let delta x be 0, period? Well notice if you were computing the rise over the run between these two points, if the delta x was 0, x minus x would be 0 and your quotient would have division by 0. Now I know that the slope is not undefined for the yellow line. I clearly see a slope 
So by letting delta x approach 0, I will still likely get an answer for the limit as delta x approaches 0, even though delta x is not allowed to exactly be 0. And that's what we call a derivative. Here's the limit definition of a derivative. Uh, the slope of a function at a certain x value is given by the limit as delta x approaches 0 for f of x plus delta x minus f of x all divided by delta x. This is just a, a quantity you'll need to memorize. Um, there's a name for this part over here. It's called the difference quotient. And there's a notation for this derivative as well. Um, rather than saying slope, we don't usually just use the word slope. That's not very rigorous or not very mathematical. We'll say f prime of x, f prime of x. And that what that does is it lets us know in some sense it's related to f. It's, it's going to be a new function of x that has some relationship to f, but it's not the original f. There's been some change, and that's what this prime designates here. So let's try one with a, a real simple example in this video, and we'll do some tougher ones in, in a later video. So for this one, here's f of x. So I like to, over on the side, also find f of x plus delta x, which simply means everywhere that you had an x in the original function, take it out and swap it for an x plus delta x. So I have x plus delta x quantity squared. So f prime of x will be the limit as delta x approaches 0. So if we take this quantity x plus delta x squared, and uh, we go ahead and FOIL it and stick it in for f of x plus delta x, we'll have x squared. And you can see what this will be over here on the side. You have x plus delta x times x plus delta x. That's what x plus delta x squared means. We have x squared plus x delta x plus another x delta x. That makes 2x delta x. And then the quantity delta x squared for the last. All right, and then minus, and we'll have x squared minus f of x all over delta x. Now, these will typically look pretty ugly when you write these out. That's very natural. But if we do it correctly, lots of things will typically cancel. And we even see here at the end, uh, we even have a common factor of delta x. So if you pull a delta x out, we'll be left with 2x plus delta x divided by delta x. That's equal to f prime of x. <clears throat> These delta x's will cancel, and we'll have the limit as delta x approaches 0 for 2x plus delta x. But notice if we try to evaluate that limit analytically, back in the first step, we could not have done that because we would have gotten 0 over 0. Uh, but now that that difficulty is gone, now that that denominator has been canceled, we would just get 2x. And the delta x goes away because we let it go to 0. But the 2x remains. So we have, you can't see that here, uh, we have f prime of x equals 2x. Now, what does that mean exactly? Let me come back up here and erase some of this. Okay, so we have f of x equals x squared, and f prime of x equals 2x. Now, here's where the, the light bulb should, should begin to click. This 2x being the derivative of f of x, the derivative of x squared, is supposed to give me the slope. Let's read this definition again should give me the slope of x squared at a particular x value. So if we look here, if we you know, choose an x value like 0, what's the slope here at 0? Well, if we plug it in the derivative, f prime at 0, 2 times 0 is 0. And sure enough, that's true on the graph as well. It's flat. There is no slope. The slope at 1 looks like a, a small positive number, and sure enough, 2 times 1 is 2. That slope is exactly 2, not an approximation, not, um, not something like this secant line back up here where the slope wasn't exactly correct. This is the perfect slope because we took the limit as the change in x went to 0. 
And uh, just one last point, if you took the derivative at negative 1, you get 2 times negative 1, it's negative 2. And again, that kind of makes sense because this half looks symmetric with that half. So, so all in all, it seems, seems pretty, pretty clear that this really does give us the slope of x squared. All right, now you might be concerned, this is such an easy example, such a small example, yet our algebra was still pretty bulky, still, still kind of a lot of algebra to hash out. What would happen if this was not x to the second, but x to the seventh, or ninth, or seventeenth, or hundredth power? Would we have to foil x plus delta x to the hundredth power, or something like that? Uh, fortunately not. Um, it turns out for uglier functions, there are shortcuts we get to use. Now this will be unpacked in the later videos that you watch, but anything that has a rule, product rule, quotient rule, those videos, the chain rule, uh, the log rule, um, the exponential rule, all of those are going to be shortcuts that help you do derivatives in a much quicker way than taking limits. The limit definition of a derivative is extremely important. Don't ever forget it, but it's not how we typically take derivatives on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, just as an example, I'll put this terrible function in here. Just imagine for a moment trying to take this as your f of x and then doing the difference quotient, the limit definition of derivative with that function, taking f of x plus delta x etc etc it would take forever hours and hours but if you know the shortcuts which if you watch some of these later videos and then come back to this one you can do this one but it would be 35 x to the 6 um, minus 2 cosine 2x plus 1 um, let's see plus 3 over 2 root x right and then minus e to the x over 2e to the x plus 2. Now, how did I do that so quickly? I did not work this one out before I recorded this video. I did that on the fly. It's just I know the shortcuts relatively well, and you will too. Um, there's different rules like the product rule and the quotient rule and the chain rule and the power rule, and I use some of those rules in taking this derivative here, and uh, you'll be able to do the same thing once you watch those videos. So hopefully that's a little bit of an encouragement that you won't have to do such large problems to actually get derivatives, um, but these shortcuts really help and they'll be coming in the next videos.